Hello Tab Nation, welcome to my YouTube channel. First off, I want to start with saying thank you to all my subscribers as I just a few days ago hit 4,000. So, new milestone, it's awesome. Love you guys. If you haven't subscribed, please do. Always throwing out automation videos, usually in auto hotkeys, which is what we're doing today. Uh, we're going to be doing version 1, version 2, like all my videos now for the most part. <clears throat> Uh, we're going to be talking about blocking input from, like, your keyboard or your mouse. Um, you know, there's a lot of reasons of why you might want to do this. A big one I can see is if you're giving this script to someone else and it your script needs to start running, doing something, they might not understand that they can't type or do stuff while the script's running, depending on what it's doing, because it might mess up something. So we're going to see, uh, you know, the different ways to do that, uh, a few other options. Like I said, version 1, version 2. We're going to start with version 1 right here. And this stuff, it's really simple. I mean, it's just block input and then some options. Uh, you got some different commands you can do. The simplest one, most common probably used one, is on and then off. <clears throat> so when I run this script, it's going to turn uh, block input on which is going to make it so I can't type, you know, basically. Uh, I'm going to have it so we can see it a little bit better in action. Run notepad. Uh, when wait active, it's going to wait. I have a sleep here for 10 seconds. That way I can sit there and show you that I'm typing and nothing's happening. And then notepad send F5 uh, just posts the date and time, I believe. I can't remember what all the information is. Um, but that way we can see that uh, script doing something when I can't and then we're gonna turn it back off because obviously I need my keyboard back in action so be careful with that it would really suck if you do block input off or forget to do this at a good spot in your script and suddenly you're gonna have to basically power off your computer with like a force power off and not be able to do anything and restart so yeah just be careful with that <clears throat> so yeah uh, we'll get to this other stuff here so the first thing I want to do is I want to run the script real quick and as you see I'm typing we'll give it that 10 seconds I'm just pushing random keys and there it goes a post the uh okay so is it the both the date and time that it does so why is that well that's because with block input it needs to run in administrator mode there's two ways to do that um for some reason you don't know let me close the script oh it closed um you can simply right click say run as administrator right here but you don't want to do that every single time. You got this code down here, which is, uh, you know, basically, uh, if not admin, run file path as admin. So it's going to automatically do it for you. You still usually have to push, you know, do you approve of that? Because it's a safety feature on Windows <laughs> that not just run scripts that want to be admin automatically. Uh, but this will at least it makes it a little bit simpler so this would just go at the top of your script like that so we're going to do that save we're going to go ahead and relaunch our script and i don't know if you can see that but i did just get now look now i can't type i i, I don't know if you can hear me i'll hit the keys really hard i don't know if you're picking that up probably not but there it goes. And as soon as it was done, I, I can start hitting my keys again. So yeah, uh, block input does need to run in administrator mode. Like I said, uh, this is the code here. If not, a, a underscore is admin run. Uh, uh, can't remember what this is called. Star run as and then in quotations, uh, a script full path. And it'll just automatically know where it needs to run. And you'll just get a pop up saying do you approve so yeah <clears throat> pretty simple but it can be used for a lot of reasons you know your script might run random times while you're working 
and it needs to temporarily stop so you don't accidentally type in whatever it's doing. Now there's some other options. Um, you can do block input, uh, mouse move, mouse move off. Basically that turns the movement of your mouse off. Uh, there's a few other ones. You can do uh, send, you can do mouse move or mouse and uh, these will basically I'll list them in the description below with the descriptions a little better. They basically, when, instead of always blocking input as being on, it's only going to do it automatically when, the, like, a send command is working. So if it's doing other stuff like running notepad, you know, it's still going to work. I can still type and everything, but if I put send up there, you know, send instead... Basically, my keyboard's going to work through all these steps, except for where the send is being sent, because I don't want to interrupt whatever the flow of the script is doing. So there's a few options on different combinations of how you can do that. I'll put those in the description below. So yeah. Um, so these can be useful for a lot of stuff. But yeah, it does need to run as administrator. Version 2. Oh, computer keeps lagging. So, talking about the same thing, I'm just showing you uh, the difference in uh, formatting, basically. Because it's all like the same, just formatted slightly different. So you're still using block input. But as you see in pretty much every field here, we are using the uh, uh, parentheses here and enclosing in quotations whatever the command is we want. So, as you see, we got... In that, we got on, we got off. Uh, for our send down here, same thing. We'll put in the little brackets there. Sleep, notepad, everything goes in quotes to make it look nice and clean. Uh, so, you know, some things are very different when it comes from version 1 to version 2. But this is, like, super simple to do either way. So if you have a script you want to translate over into version 2 or go back to version 1 for whatever reason all you got to do is make these little uh you know changes here at the end and beginning of each uh thing after the command so that's really it uh down here kind of same thing uh so you know it looks about the same but once again we're doing some of those uh enclosed things here so a little bit different formatting with that. But that's really about it. Uh, like I said, description below, I'll have a few more of the commands. And uh, if you guys have any questions on this, definitely let me know. And I will see you all on the next video. And thanks for the 4,000 subscribers. I'm looking forward to 5,000 now. See you guys.